Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on meiosis and it is meant to coincide with chapter 13 in the textbook. In 1902, Walter Sutton was a graduate student at Columbia University. He told his professor, I know why the yellow dog is yellow. His professor was Edmund B. Wilson, who at the time was the most respected cell biologist in the United States. Sutton discovered the chromosomes carry inherited traits. His professor, Wilson, just nodded when he said that, but that summer, Wilson took Sutton to Beaufort, North Carolina for a vacation. Wilson began to pay attention to what Sutton was saying. Sutton was originally an engineering student in Kansas. One summer at home, his whole family got typhoid fever and his 17-year-old brother died. He decided to switch to medicine. When studying biology, he, preve- he befriended a zoology student Clarence McClung. Sutton collected lubber grasshoppers for McClung, who liked their large cells to study, to study cell structure. McClung noticed some of the sperm had an extra chromosome and theorized it determined sex. He was right. Sutton thought that if the extra chromosome could determine a trait, maybe other chromosomes also determine traits. Sutton published a paper that described the sex cells of the grasshoppers and received his master's based on this work. He then went to Columbia to work with Wilson. He tried to convince Wilson that he solved the mystery of heredity. A famous British biologist, William Bateson, came to Columbia to talk about the new science of genetics. When Sutton listened to Bateson talk about Mendel's laws, he knew he was right about chromosomes. All of the pieces fit together. Sutton published a paper describing how chromosomes are the physical basis for heredity. All later research has confirmed Sutton's theory, but it took 40 years to be accepted. Sutton didn't pursue genetics after this, but finished his medical training. He died as a bachelor, 39 years old, of a burst appendix. His work is the foundation of all modern genetics and molecular biology. Most 19th century biologists didn't take the idea seriously that chromosomes were responsible for heredity. August Weissman was an exception. He argued that organisms inherit traits by means of some information, carrying chemicals that is inside the nucleus. He also said that since sex involves the fusion of heredity materials from both parents, then the egg and sperm must each contain half of the amount of the hereditary material. Within three years, cell biologists confirmed his theory. First, they showed that sperm and egg contain only half the normal chromosome number. Second, they observed the special process of meiosis, which reduces the number of chromosomes by half. By the late 19th century, most cell biologists accepted that the chromosomes were central to the process of mitosis and meiosis, and probably chromosomes were important in embryo development, but they did not know what the chromosome did. They didn't know they were the hereditary material. In the 1900s, three scientists independently rediscovered Mendel's work. Mendel's work includes the principles of heredity from 1866. Mendel's work was with pea plants, and he said that every organism has two sets of genes. Within a few months, the field of genetics was born with great intensity. Biologists realized that the behavior of chromosomes might explain Mendel's principles. Genetics is the study of inheritance. Transmission genetics is the study of how variation is passed from one generation to the next. Molecular genetics is the study of how DNA carries genetic instructions and how cells carry out these instructions. We will discuss molecular genetics later. Phenotype is the physical and behavioral characteristics of an organism. For example, height or hair color. Genotype is the genetic constitution of a cell or organism. Genotypes is a collection of genes. A genome is all the genes in an organism. A gene is a region of DNA that specifies a particular protein or that helps regulate the expression of other genes. Structural genes specify a particular protein and regulatory genes regulate the expression of other genes. Under the influence of an organism's environment, the genes of the genotype help determine the characteristics of an organism. Phenotype results from an interaction of genes and the environment. So in other words, you are a product of your genetics and of your environment. Asexual reproduction 
is the reproduction through mitosis. It produces offspring with genes from one parent. The offspring are clones of the parents. In other words, they are genetically identical. We've already looked at binary fission in bacteria, but budding in organisms such as hydra and yeast is another type of asexual reproduction where a small bud develops on the parent and it grows and breaks off and becomes a clone of the parent. Regeneration is the regrowth of a lost body part. Lizards can regrow a lost tail and starfish can regrow a lost arm. Vegetative reproduction is being able to take a piece of a plant and grow it into another plant. Sexual reproduction produces offspring that inherit genetic information from two parents. The offspring are different from the parents. Sexual reproduction creates new variations of genomes. Chromosomes come in pairs like socks. Each chromosome has 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs in a human. Each chromosome with a specific size and banding pattern has another one just like it. Homologous pairs are pairs of matching chromosomes. A homolog is each member of the homologous pair. Diploid is abbreviated as 2N, and these are cells that contain two sets of chromosomes. The diploid number in humans is 46. Sexually reproducing organisms maintain the diploid number in their offspring by supplying their offspring with half of the needed chromosomes. This half set of chromosome is passed to the offspring in special reproductive cells called gametes. Gametes are sex cells and include sperm and egg. Gametes are haploid, which means they have a single set of chromosomes or one chromosome from each homologous pair. The haploid number in humans is 23. In all organisms, a female produces eggs, ovum, and a male produces sperm or a spermatozoan. Meiosis is a process that allots one haploid set of chromosomes to each of four daughter cells. Those daughter cells are going to be either sperm or egg. Germ cells are the cells that produce the gametes. Germ cells are found in the gonads. Those are special gamete producing organs found in animals. The ovaries and testicles or testes are the gonads in animals. Somatic cells are all of the rest of the cells in a multicellular organism and somatic cells only undergo mitosis, whereas germ cells undergo meiosis. Fertilization is the union of two haploid gametes to form a diploid cell. The fertilized egg is called a zygote. Syngamy is the alternate term for fertilization. Meiosis consists of two cell divisions, meiosis I and meiosis II. DNA replication occurs before the first division of meiosis I, but not before the second division of meiosis II. It occurs in the S phase of interphase during the cell cycle of the germ cells. Prosphase I is the first phase of meiosis. 90% of the total meiosis occurs in prophase I. The chromosomes condense and homologous pairs stay together to form a tetrad. A tetrad consists of two sets of two sister chromatids. The nuclear membrane breaks down, the nucleoli disappear, homologous pairs come together in the process called synapsis. The homologous chromosomes align, forming the tetrads. Crossing over occurs, which I'll discuss later, and spindles appear. Metaphase one, the tetrads are attached to spindles by kinetochores. They line up on the metaphase plate. Anaphase one is when the sister chromatids, which are still attached at the centromeres, move towards poles. The homologous pairs separate at this point, but the sister chromatids do not. Homologous chromosomes move to opposite sides. In telophase one, each pole has a haploid set of chromosomes, but two copies of each. Cleavage furrow or cell plates form depending on if it's plant or animals. In prophase two, spindles reform and two centromeres form in each cell. This also includes the division of two cells. So in meiosis, cytokinesis really is together with telophase. Prophase two is when the spindles reform and two centro centrosomes form in each cell. In metaphase two, chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. 
Connetitures are attached to the spindles. In anaphase two, the centromeres of sister chromatids separate and move to opposite poles. So this is very similar to anaphase in mitosis. In telophase two, including cytokinesis, the nuclei form four daughter cells form their haploid and each is different due to crossing over. These are the products. Crossing over is the exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of a homologous pair of chromosomes during the synapsis of prophase one. These products recombine chromosomes. So we wind up with recombinants which are different from the original. In combination with independent assortment or independent orientation of the chromosomes, crossing over and independent assortment creates variation. This, these are differences between members of the same species. Also, the nature of random eggs being fertilized by random sperm adds to variation. Variation is important because it makes a species stronger. The individuals with variations best suited to the environment will survive, reproduce, and pass those genes, those variations on. Natural selection is when the environment chooses individuals with variations suited to the environment. Those favorable variations accumulate in the population and become normal traits.